Oregon 20, Utah 17, and Bo Nix was dealing in the first half. He was absolutely dealing, and the reason why I did not give out this game on the Bet U.S. College Football Show is because I had conflicting reports, uh, <laughs> to say the least. I had people in one ear telling me that Bo Nix is not going to play. There's offensive linemen talking about, like, he's he's a no-go. There's no chance he's playing, whatever. And then there were other people saying, yeah, like, he's, he's a little hurt. He's a little dinged up, but, like, he's going to go. Like, are you serious? It's a senior year. It's senior night. Like, of course he's going to play. Like, this is basically to get to the Pac-12 championship game. He's going to play. So, I'm going back and forth because this team, like, Ty Thompson has not gotten any rep. Who knows what to make of this? But, man, they come out, and they are up 17-3 to at the half. And I'm watching this game just going, I cannot believe. And and I did personally bet Oregon minus 2.5 when it came out on Sunday night. But I didn't give it out on the show, and that's what I really, like, keep track of because like that's that's my job. That's what I do. I give out the picks to you guys. But I didn't feel confident enough by the time we got to the game on Wednesday. So uh regardless, Bo Nix came out and was dealing. Just dealing. And then you get out of halftime and you know the ducks are up 17 to 3. You're thinking, all right, Autzen late. This one's gonna be rough for Utah to be able to get back in this thing. And Oregon hands them that fumble. Hands it to them. Like it's it one play and Utah returns it for 11 yards. Kareen Reed is the guy that returned the... Here, let me pull it up on the screen here. They gave Utah seven points because they ran Ty Thompson out there. And rather than getting him just acclimated to playing, and I don't know if it was like the ankle stiffened up for Bo Nix or what, but if they if they had just handed the ball off, I don't think you run into this problem. But then that immediately puts more pressure on Oregon, so Bo Nix has to come back out there, and he doesn't look great on the next drive. They go three and out. Uh, the thing that saved them really was Oregon's defense which how in the world could you possibly know what to expect from Oregon's defense? They've been bad. And and the same can be said for Utah's defense. This is not a great defense. Um, but they, you know, Utah came out, got the ball down 17 to 10, and immediately turnover. But then Bonux didn't look great again. Three plays, negative six yards, and a punt. Three and out. And then Utah goes right down the field, 12 plays, 88 yards, and scores and ties the game at seven. Like, this was bonkers. But then it got really crazy because Oregon did manage to go down the field and kick a field goal towards the end of the third quarter. And, yeah, here is how the rest of the game went in the fourth quarter. Which, between these two, like, you would expect that the defense was, um, what's the word I'm looking at? Uh, the defenses were going to give up points, right? You you almost might would have thought that this was a USC and UCLA type of game if you just looked at the advanced number. But instead, what you got was a 20-17 to 17 game uh, as, as we're, you know, early, early in the fourth quarter is when Oregon kicked that field goal. But these are the drives after that field. You had Utah drive down the field, 11 plays, 49 yards, turnover on down. Then you had Oregon, three plays, 50 yards, and an interception. So Utah gets the ball back. Four plays, 22 yards, and Utah throws an interception back to Oregon. Oregon goes three and out, has to punt. Utah, six plays, 26 yards, and turnover on down. Like, this, it was a defensive game in Eugene. I never would have imagined this. Like, I, the trick play, just, Oregon never should have been in that. They really shouldn't. That trick play was an awful call. Awful decision. Um, but hey, what are you going to do? They, they found a way to get the win. Cheers to them. They are now 9-2. and two. Bo Nix goes out with a win, but now, now they got to go to Corvallis. We'll see what that means. Of course, Oregon State has been looking absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're not going to hit on their game today, but, man, that team's really good. Jonathan Smith is a uh, heck of a coach. So I hope Dan Lanning and company, Kenny Dillingham, are ready to go again. That makes Washington, Utah, and Oregon State in back-to-back-to-back weeks. And then maybe you get to go play against USC in the Pac-12 title. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.